Good afternoon. Welcome on the first presentation of the Summer Constia webinars. This will be about imperfections in the analysis and design of uh, steel structures. My name is Jozef Solai. I'm the technical director of uh, Constil Solutions Limited, the developer of the Constil software. I will be today's presenter. And uh, first, I would like to do um, a small presentation about the mechanics of the geometrical imperfections relationship between uh, second order effects and imperfections, so a little bit a background of the calculations. Uh, then some words about Eurocode methods with imperfections. And then I would like to uh, demonstrate all the new tools regarding imperfections analysis in the analysis and design process uh, uh, in constant software, especially uh, uh, using the new functionalities uh, of the 12 version. So, this is the equilibrium equation for the uh, column with the internal moment and the external moment. This is the elastic critical load, the Euler load, well known Euler load for the column, and uh, the associated buckling mode shape, which is in a simple, su simply supported column. This is a half sine wave uh, buckling mode shape with some uh, uh, proper amplitude. And this, these equations and these shapes can be generalized to any kind of uh, system which can be described by finite element uh, methodology. And the uh, equation at the critical stage is generalized as an eigenvalue analysis equation. This is here. Here we have the elastic first order stiffness, Ks, then the geometric second order stiffness kg these are the stiffness term including material and elastic material and the uh, geometric properties and in the second order stiffness term we have the internal uh, forces and moment acting on the uh, structural model uh, this is the eigenvalue and this is the eigenvector, which is in turn this eigenvalue, it, this is the elastic critical load level of a critical value, and the ULBA, this is, stands for the linear bifurcation analysis. This is the eigenvector, eigenmode, and this is the buckling mode shape uh, of the uh, structural model. So this is the classical linear stability analysis which is uh, uh, which had been implemented into constil this is a generalized uh, equation for for that simple columnication and the result is a generalized elastic critical load level involving all the acting loads and a generalized uh, 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 eigen or buckling mode buckling mode shape so this is the perfect system the second step is the analysis of the imperfect system. So, in this uh, uh, presentation, I will talk about uh, buckling mode-based mode imperfection, which means that we have a special kind of uh, imperfection, which is uh, which has the shape uh, equal uh, to a buckling mode. If we have this type of imperfection, we can uh, we can write this equation, which is quite similar to the earlier one. But the uh, at the right hand side we have not a zero value, but we have a load type 
uh, value or an internal moment here uh, in the column example coming from the buckling mode based imperfection. It is very import, important to say that uh, these accurate equations can be only written if we have a uh, buckling mode shaped, uh, uh, buckling mode based imperfection. If we have some other shape for the imperfection, then these equations are not really accurate. But that's why uh, it is a very uh, suitable to handle the imperfections by uh, buckling mode shapes because the analysis is much more straightforward and uh, accurate. So we have this uh, second order, what we are looking for is a second order uh, uh, displacement of this column. So we have an amplitude here with a half sine wavelength. This is shown here. This is the original imperfect shape of that column and this imperfection is equal to a buckling mode shape. Then we can calculate the second order displacement increment due to this shape and the compression force uh, subjected uh, uh, at the uh, top of that column. And solving these equations with the elastic critical load level, we get this relationship for the second order displacement increment, which is a very suitable handling of the second order effect. Uh, the the uh, basic thing with this equation that the second order displacement will have exactly the same shape as the original uh, imperfection. It is only true if we have buckling mode based imperfections. So in this case the second order displacement will have completely the same shape with a suitable uh, calculatable uh, 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 amplification factor. It depends on the normal force and how far we are from the uh, elastic critical load level. So this amplification factor uh, will be higher and higher as we are approaching the elastic critical load level. Theoretically, we cannot exceed the elastic critical load level only approaching. So this is the second order displacement increment and we can calculate the total displacement which is equal to the uh, original amplitude of the imperfection plus the second order displacement increment here and then we get this well-known amplification factor since the shape is equal for both uh, uh, term here so the original shape and the second order increment shape of course the total displacement shape will be also the same and uh, equal to the buckling mode shape and it is multiplied by a suitable amplification factor again the amplification factor is larger and larger as we are approaching the elastic critical load level. And why do we need this total displacement term? We need because these are the uh, basics for the evaluation of the uh, internal uh, forces and moments, second order internal forces and moments generated by the this uh, imperfection. In this case, in this uh, column example, uh, we can calculate the second order bending moment which is equal to the normal force multiplied by the total lateral displacement and this will be the final uh, uh, equation for the second order internal moment. So we can see that it depends on this well-known amplification factor. So these are the uh, 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 relationships for the imperfect column problem and these can be again generalized 
to finite element terms. So first, this is the basic equation for the imperfect uh, uh, second order analysis. In this case, we can say that we have an imperfection load coming from the Buckley mode shape imperfection and the geometrical stiffness, the similar like here. Uh, this is the imperfection load case and we should solve the second order displacement increments due to this uh, imperfection. And similarly, uh, it can be solved easily for the second order displacement increment vector which is equal to the uh, original imperfection vector multiplied by this uh, amplification vector, ampli amplification factor, which is very similar to this one, although it is written in terms of the uh, alpha critical value, so the elastic critical load level, and the total uh, total displacement vector can be again written in terms of the original imperfection vector and this well-known amplification factor. And this is the base for the evaluation of the internal uh, second order internal forces and moments uh, generally, which is a function of that load, imperfection load and this uh, amplification factor. So these are the general equations what we are using in Constil. Very important to note that from the Buckley mode based imperfection we can generate an imperfection load. This is much easier to handle so we can add this load case to any combination and the second order effects uh, can be characterized by this amplification factor. Uh, this is also very important to understand why it is uh, important to see these uh, elastic critical load levels which are very valuable uh, information about the second order sensitivity of the uh, of the structure of model so we can we can uh, 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 illustrate this on this column example where we have the normal force on this uh, vertical axis and the lateral diffraction at the horizontal axis and we can uh, illustrate this curve of the total displacement as we increase the normal force the total displacement is also increasing progressively and finally it approaches uh, the elastic critical load level when we are approach the elastic critical load level the uh, lateral deflections are going to infinity. So this is the second order approximation of these uh, 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 deflections, lateral uh, displacement and this is this uh, progressively increasing displacements are uh, due to this amplification uh, factor. Uh, this is a uh, a graph which illustrates the second order effect as this amplification factor how it depends on the actual elastic critical load level and from this figure we can directly see uh, why it is important to monitor this elastic critical load level and how it is governing the magnitude of second order effect and these num these colors are similar are uh, uh, familiar for the constant users from the uh, buckling sensitivity analysis where we classify in the summary of the sensitivity analysis we classify uh, the magnitude of the second order effects on the different uh, members by these colors. What does it mean? 
The red color means that the alpha critical value, the corresponding alpha critical value is below one. What does it mean? That we are reaching the elastic critical failure below the applied design load level. So that is, uh, of course, uh, not acceptable. The second one is the orange. This means that we are very close to the elastic critical load level uh, and the, this, uh, this amplification factor goes very high. So if we are somewhere here, the second order uh, amplification can be two, three, four, or uh, uh, ten times larger than the uh, uh, original amplitude of the imperfection, so causing a very huge second order effect. So these structural components where uh, this alpha critical value is relevant, these structural components or members are very, very slender. The second range is between two and four. Uh, these are also slender structures, but, uh, but uh, usually slender frames or, or, or uh, slender steel structures are somewhere in that uh, uh, range. So between two and four, it is usually an acceptable level for the elastic critical load. And we have the other colors uh, showing the magnitude of the second order effect in terms of the alpha critical value. And we, if we have a higher effect than 10, we can say that it is not really relevant because we can see that the magni magnification or the amplification effect is very, very close to one. That means that uh, there's no amplification effect from the uh, in, uh, imperfections uh, corresponding to a buckling mode which has an alpha critical load level higher than 10. So that's why the Eurocode also says that if we have an alpha critical for in-plane buckling higher than 10, then the second order bending moments, in-plane bending moments, shouldn't be uh, taken into account. We can neglect them because uh, the change in the bending moment compared to the first order calculation is uh, insignificant. So this is a very good illustration of the second order effect and why it is important to monitor the alpha critical value and how the second order effect are progressively increasing as we are approaching uh, with the alpha critical value, the critical stage, so the one value. Okay, the next topic is the equivalent imperfection approach in the Eurocode. What does it mean and how it is handled? Uh, in the Eurocode. First of all, let me uh, discuss a little bit uh, what types of relevant structural imperfections should be taken into account when we're calculating backlink uh, resistance of uh, structural members or, or structures. Usually we have to uh, take into consideration somehow all of these imperfections, but not directly. I will discuss it uh, later, but what are these imperfections? First of all, material imperfections, which are the residual stresses. These stresses are coming from the uh, manufacturing pro processes, hot rolling or welding, code forming uh, processes. Uh, during these uh, processes, uh, there, there are usually significant uh, residual uh, strains and residual stresses in the members, in the cross-section. It can reach even the level of the yield strength or sometimes half of the yield strength at uh, different points of the cross-section. This is a typical distribution of the residual stresses for a whole throat cross-section. And these stresses, of course, should be taken into account 
especially in the buckling resistance calculations because uh, these stresses are highly influencing the buckling resistance of the members. The second group is the geometrical imperfection. Uh, it, it can have various forms like uh, local section imperfections, so out of shape of the sections or uh, 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 crookedness of, of the elements of, of the cross-section. Uh, the next level can be member imperfections, member geometrical imperfections. These are usually the member out of straightness. These are usually defined as tolerances in, uh, in uh, the uh, uh, product tables. And there can be global structural imperfections, usually uh, like uh, 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 swaying imperfections, these are construction imperfections. All of these imperfections somehow uh, modify the behavior, especially the second order and stability behavior of the structure, so should be taken into account in the uh, buckling design analysis. And finally, we can have load imperfections. These are usually uh, eccentric loads, considering that usually the loads are not really acting on the position where we uh, want them or where we uh, modeling uh, them. So these are basically all uh, types of the relevant imperfections which are advised to somehow consider during the calculations. Of course, directly we cannot take those into uh, account. Uh, so what can we uh, do? Uh, for that, uh, there is this approach, the equivalent geometrical imperfection approach in the Eurocode and in other standards as well. What does it mean? That uh, uh, the geometric imperfections are the easiest way to calculate directly. So we can take directly these imperfections into account, especially the member and global structural imperfections. And uh, if we somehow uh, define a proper uh, amplitude for these imperfections, uh, then we can consider all the other imperfections to be covered by uh, this uh, augmented uh, uh, amplitude for the geometric imperfections. That's why usually the, uh, for example, in a member out of straightness, what we see in the Eurocode, those tables with L over 200, 250, those are very large uh, 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 member out of straightness amplitudes. Usually the real one in members are just a, a portion of, of that amount, but these are and large values in order to cover all the other effects from loading, load eccentricities, sanction imperfections and material residual stresses. So this is the approach in the error code. Uh, and uh, what should we define uh, for an equivalent geometrical imperfection? Uh, basically we can define it by three uh, parameters, the shape, amplitude and the direction of that imperfection. For the shape, uh, the traditional modeling is a half sine wave for a member, so this is a member crookedness or member out of straightness in the Eurocode as well. This table in the Eurocode is valid for this half sine wave shape, so the amplitudes, but uh, if we consider uh, the secations, what I uh, uh, showed before, it is correct only for simply supported column where we have really this half sine wave for buckling uh, shape. In other, if we have other support system uh, or other loads, it is uh, a quite good uh, approach to consider the relevant buckling shape. So those buckling shapes which are the most uh, critical ones as 
uh, shape of the imperfection, but then we are in trouble how to uh, define the amplitudes because the error code is very short on uh, defining uh, amplitudes for uh, backlink mode shape imperfections. In the new Euro code, there will be a little bit more uh, rule rules for uh, for the definitions of of amplitudes. But at the moment, we can just rely on that table, and there is one chapter in the Euro code directly for uh, for backlink mode based imperfections. But again, only for uh, for uh, compressed members, and the direction is should be taken, of course, to cause the highest utilization in each combination. Sometimes we should change the direction uh, for different combinations where we have different loads and different directions of the applied loads. So it should be taken into account that it is not enough to take just one direction for the uh, imperfections because sometimes it can have a beneficial effect on the behavior. And the design approach for the equivalent uh, imperfection is that, as I mentioned, we have a large equivalent amplitude for the uh, imperfection shape to uh, give exactly the uh, backlink resistance, the real backlink resistance of the member uh, when we evaluate the cross-section checks only considering these uh, uh, second-order effects coming directly from the imperfections. This is what I will show uh, in uh, Constil later. Okay, some words about the different types of imperfections defined in the URA code. Uh, it should be it should be uh, uh, kept in mind that uh, the basic model of the Euro code is a plane frame. Uh, that means that uh, uh, we have a plane uh, and out uh, for for the structure, and out uh, out of plane this frame is completely braced. So swaying can occur only in that plane. So there can be two possible backlink modes. Uh, backlink modes in the plane and backlink modes out of plane. In the plane there can be only flexural backlink. These are usually uh, strong axis flexural backlink modes and uh, there can be non-sway or sway modes. The non-sway modes are when uh, uh, the, the plane frame is braced in the plane as well not only out of plane but in the plane and then the nodes are not moving cannot move because those are braced so in plane only between the nodes can happen the buckling and swaying if it is not uh, braced in the plane so the nodes can move uh, laterally in the plane of the frame so this is the swaying mode uh, and the out of plane, we consider that uh, the frame is properly braced uh, basically at the nodes, but sometimes uh, on the member as well, out of plane. And uh, the out of plane buckling can be flexural and or lateral torsional buckling between the uh, bracing points. From these uh, basic types of buckling modes, we can have two types of second order effects, global and local one. Global second order effects only from in-plane sway buckling mode, so where the nodes, the structural nodes are moving, and this will cause second order strong axis in-plane bending along the whole frame due to the uh, uh, gravity loads. So if we move out uh, swaying the plane and we have gravity loads then we will have additional uh, bending moments in the plane and in the plane this is usually the second uh, the strong axis in plane bending moment. Peak values are usually at the corners 
uh, Eurocode says that this second order effect, so this global in-plane sway second order effect is relevant only if the associated uh, elastic critical load level, that means in-plane and swaying, is larger, uh, is uh, uh, lower than 10. So as as I showed this uh, this illustration, this graph for the second order effect, uh, above if we have this critical uh, load level above 10, then the second order effects are negligible. And we have three types of local second order effect. We can have in-plane local second order effect from the in-plane non-sway backlink mode. These are also second order strong axis bending but only along the members. It is relevant if uh, the associated elastic critical load is lower than 4, so then we have to take into directly this uh, imperfection into account or this uh, second order effect into account. Uh, from out of plane, out of plane we can have two types of local second order effect. From out of plane flexure or buckling we can have second order weak axis out of plane bending again only along the member and from out of plane lateral torsion or backlink we can have second order weak axis bending and warping moment along the member so these are the possible second order effects and finally the associated uh, imperfections are listed in the euro code first in plane imperfections covering only the global effect this is the initial sway here is the chapter where it is uh, defined so as a rigid body motion we just uh, move out the node of the frame considering this uh, global effect only the swaying global effect we can consider in plane the global and local effect together when we move out the nodes as well and we put and a local bow, uh, in-plane local bow into uh, to the uh, uh, column. This is defined here in that chapter. Or we can use the in-plane sway buckling mode, which naturally uh, contains both the global and local effect in the, in the plane, the swaying mode. This is defined in that chapter. And out of plane. Uh, Eurocode is very short for the out-of-plane local uh, uh, effect covered by uh, equivalent imperfection. Basically, if we have an out-of-plane flexure or backlink due to the compression, then we can have a local bow with this table uh, L over uh, uh, something uh, uh, amplitude, or we can use the out-of-plane backlink mode uh, for the imperfection and this is defined in that that chapter so the buckling mode based imperfections but it is again only for flexural buckling so if we have any other buckling so buckling about a, a eccentric support or constraint or lateral torsional buckling or flexural torsional buckling so we have a, a for example a, a monosymmetric or asymmetric section uh, Eurocode doesn't have any uh, rule how to define the amplitude for the equivalent imperfection. Although we can use somehow this uh, table for the local bow, usually we have only that one. And what is advisable usually to see the most compressed part of the member, so usually the com most compressed flange. And for that flange we can consider that this is uh, compressed column and we can apply this uh, this uh, 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 table okay so let me move on uh. Let me move on and show the show the uh, Constil uh, presentation now, Constil demonstration for the 
uh, for these issues. So first of all, I would like to I would like to uh, demonstrate the mechanics of the imperfections in this simple column model what I uh, showed you in the first slides uh, of the presentation. So we have a simple column here subjected to a normal force and if we run the analysis for this column then of course this is the first order analysis result and we can we can get the relevant backlink mode which is uh, a flexure of backlink so this is the half sine wave backlink mode and this is the eigenvalue which is the elastic critical load level it is now exactly 2 that means that 2 times the applied load so 2 times this uh, compression forms uh, compression force we uh, have the Euler load the elastic critical load level if we have alpha critical value equal to 2 then from that figure what I showed you earlier we can see that at 2 this amplification factor is exactly 2 and the second order increment uh, amplification factor is 2 minus 1 is exactly 1 that means that the second order increment will be equal to the original amplitude of the imperfection that is what I would like to show you in this example first so we have to define this Buckley mode as imperfection uh, it is the same as in earlier version so we have to right click on that column and apply eigenshape as imperfection we have now a new table in this version let me discuss a little bit the the options here first of all we have an imperfection group we can define more groups for imperfections including uh, uh, several imperfection cases so in one imperfection group we can define more backlink modes as imperfection case with uh, different amplitudes and different settings here so this is now uh, let's say imperfection group 1 uh, we can have a name for that imperfection let's let's say that flexural imperfection the type of imperfection this is a new function uh, it can be can be overall or local overall type imperfection means that it it is some kind of uh, global type imperfection which is valid for the whole structure in all the combination so it is not a combination dependent backlink mode but this is a, a overall type backlink mode which usually usually if we have a swaying mode or, or this is usually uh, some kind of constructional uh, uh, imperfection which is valid for the whole structure so if we put it as overall then this imperfection will be applied to all the combination if we put it as local then this imperfection will be valid only for that combination where we uh, define it so now we have only one combination at the moment so uh, it is anyway what I define here second one modeling of imperfection can be complete or nodal displacement that means that if we choose the nodal displacement then uh, no twist and warping will be taken as imperfection to the uh, structure usually I recommend to use the complete one but the euro code in the uh, lateral torsional backlink uh, imperfections there is a very small uh, uh, section for that uh, euro code recommend 
to uh, that uh, the torsional imperfection can be neglected but I'm pretty sure that it is only because uh, not really other software can do the complete uh, modeling of the imperfection with all the degree of freedom including the twists, rotations and, and the warping displacements as well. May, mainly or, or maybe only Constil, uh, the software which can do it among the uh, structural design software products. So the third option is the sign of amplitude. This is also a uh, new uh, in uh, Constil. It can be automatic or manual input. If we choose uh, the automatic option, I recommend this, then the software automatically defines in each combination the, uh, uh, the suitable uh, amplitude, uh, direction, uh, sign for the amplitude, so the direction for the, for the imperfection uh, uh, to cause the uh, highest utilization on the uh, combination, on the actual combination. So if we have a, a lateral load in one direction or in the other direction, I will show it uh, later, then, then the program automatically changes uh, the, the sign. So it is a new uh, uh, new function in Constil. If we have an overall type imperfection, it is very, very, uh, very, very comfortable that I can forget uh, the sign which is usually quite important and same as in the old version we can type a millimeter value or multiplication factor for the amplitude and then we have to define the value for the amplitude and we have the usual uh, uh, help for defining if we have a, a, a normal uh, if we have a, a, a column problem a compression problem now let me define just 10 millimeter for this amplitude and accept this. In the load tab we have similarly and before here the imperfection group and all the defined parameters here which can be changed uh, if we want. And then we can restart the analysis and select here the imperfection group and then uh, calculate the results. We have one more option here in the analysis uh, setting table. Here in the load cases we can we have a second order analysis of buckling mode based imperfection load cases. What does it mean? Uh, among the load cases we can calculate directly uh, the imperfection generated load cases, so only those effects, those loads and uh, deformations and effects from these loads uh, which is generated by the buckling mode based imperfection. So basically what we evaluate there, we calculate this equivalent imperfection load and from this load we uh, calculate all the additional displacement and internal forces. Uh, let me do this and run the calculation. Okay, so first order result is the same. It is very important that the first order results are not affected by the imperfections because uh, the uh, imperfection can have effect only in the second order analysis as it is shown here. So these are all second order analysis in which we have to consider the, uh, the deformed shape of the structure. This is basically a second order analysis. So the imperfection have uh, accurate calculation and effect only in the second order results. So in the first order result this load uh, doesn't taken to the uh, to the model only in the second order calculation. So in the first order I have only the compression force but in the second order we see that we have a, an out of plane 
flexural uh, deflection because of the imperfection and this is the second order results for that. Uh, what are the results what we have? We have here this first the imperfection case what I mentioned so this is the calculation of the imperfection load case this is exactly this one from the imperfection load case what we see is the deformation internal forces and reactions so the deformation what we see here is not the original shape of the imperfection but the second order increment because this is uh, what is what is important for the engineer the the amplitude and the shape is defined earlier so it is it, it is it is uh, it is defined we don't have to show it what we show here in the imperfection load case is this deformation calculated deformation so the second order displacement increment uh, with this equation and we can see that uh, the associated alpha critical value which is now 2 uh, that if it is 2 this amplification factor is e exactly 1 so the second order uh, displacement increment is ex equal to the original amplitude and that is what we see here that uh, of course it is second order uh, calculation with the with some iteration so we can see that uh, it is more or less the same so the highest value is uh, is about 10 and this is the second order increment and from this second order increment we have this bending moment and this is this imperfection case is taken to the load combination as well the deformation and uh, the bending moment okay now let me show you that what if if I define a new load case with a, a lateral load Okay, and I take it in the middle here, and I do two combination in which I change the sign of the lateral load. So in the first combination the lateral load is acting in that direction positive with one and in the second combination together with the normal force the compression force uh, I have another opposite direction for the lateral load if I calculate for all the combinations using this uh, imperfection group then I see the first order results and we have the first order uh, first order displacement in the first combination in positive direction and in the second order combination in negative direction with the first order deflection of 35 uh, millimeters and if I check the second order then I can see that the second order uh, uh, results is in that case 8 millimeters, 80 millimeters in the positive direction and in the second combination it is 8, 80 millimeters in the negative direction so the sign uh, of the imperfection is automatically identified the worst position and taken in the right direction. We can check it uh, here in the combination one 
imperfection combination, we can check here the second order deformation, which is 10 but in positive direction. And in the second combination, it is also 10 but in the negative direction. So that, that is what is a new uh, uh, tool in Constil that in different combinations, if we have an overall imperfection valid for all the combinations, then in each combination it is evaluated which is the worst case and it is taken in the right uh, direction. So we don't have to deal with it. One more thing, what's happening if in the second combination I have only half normal force. What can we expect if we have uh, half normal force? So uh, we will have a higher alpha critical value. So if we calculate now, again, this uh, column problem, that we can see that in the first load combination we have alpha critical value of 2. In the second, we have an alpha critical value of 4. What does it mean? That the second order displacement increment is should be uh, a lower value in the second combination because alpha critical value is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3, so it should be one-third of the original uh, amplitude. So as we are further from the elastic critical load level with our loads, which can happen in different combinations, for example if we have a dominant snow load or a dominant wind load or uplift wind load or whatever, we will have different normal force in the column and that should be reflected in the second order uh, calculation of, 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 uh, from the imperfection and it is done by the secation automatically and with this amplification factor regarding the bending moments as well. So if we see now the second order uh, loads or first the deformation, we see that in the first, uh, first combination from the imperfection in the right positive direction I have this value close to 10 so with the alpha critical value of 2 but in the second combination it is in the negative direction so in, in, the, in the opposite direction but the value is not 10 anymore it is 3.3 .3, which is exactly one-third of the original uh, uh, amplitude which is valid for all the combinations and it was 10. It was defined by me as 10 and uh, it is accurately calculating here and of course the associated bending moment which is here 1.16 and in the other combination it is 3. Uh, 47. So uh, this is what I wanted to show you in this very simple example regarding the new uh, functionalities uh, in Constil, especially those one regarding to overall and local type. This will be shown uh, on a on another model, maybe uh, uh, on a on a frame model. Uh, the sign, how we calculate the sign and, uh, and how we deal with the second order effect uh, using these imperfection loads, taking to all the combination with the necessary amplitude and amplification factor, causing the accurate second order displacement and second order internal forces and moment 
in the right direction in each combination. So how can we use this on another simple example which is a three bay frame now. Uh, this is the last example of this uh, uh, webinar and uh, I would like to show you first uh, uh, what is what is uh, the basic behavior of, of, of this uh, three bay uh, uh, ports of frame. The loads are just some dead loads, some wind, two wind in, in, in uh, uh, one direction in uplift and some snow, uh, snow load cases and I compiled uh, nine different combinations. Okay, so if we run first the analysis just to see the uh, behavior, the Buckley modes, first order, second order uh, behavior. For all the combinations, then uh, we can see for the different combinations there are lateral movements sometimes. Uh, this is the uplift wind. So the 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 behavior, the first order behavior can be very different in different combinations. And regarding the buckling, uh, we have different uh, buckling modes in different combinations. Uh, usually we have a separate buckling for the internal columns. Here we have a quite low value for the in-plane swaying buckling mode. This is because we have three bays, so we have a quite high um, uh, gravity loads from, from the dead load and from the snow load and uh, we have comparably uh, low stiffness in the plane, so that's why usually in the multi-bay uh, holes, multi-bay frames, the swaying mode is quite important to take into account and it can generate significant second order effect. Now the related alpha critical value is less than 4, so according to the Euro code, since it is less than 10, we should take this into account and we will do it by uh, applying this buckling mode shape, uh, applying this as imperfection and taking to the uh, uh, structural model. And we have additional buckling modes for lateral torsional buckling of, of beam, different beams, this one, this one for the internal beams, etc. So if without any imperfection, if we just quickly check the performance based on the general method and the uh, first order calculation, then we get for a highest utilization point here, it is about 92. In this column we have a high utilization at the top of the column, again 92 percent, etc. So the, the uh, frame is adequate, it is highly utilized at the corner regions, but it is quite uh, adequate. First, let me take this mode, this imperfection mode, as a swaying uh, buckling mode uh, and take it to the uh, model. I use this column because this is the, the relevant column uh, from the left wind, uh, wind direction. This will be in that combination this will have the highest normal force, excluding of course the, the uh, internal uh, columns which are quite slender and not really affected by the bending moments. So usually I recommend to take those columns uh, for the definition of the amplitude where we have the highest normal force and the highest bending moment. Now we can see that it is 
that is uh, 130 in the other column it is somewhat smaller but the bending moment the in-plane bending moment which will be amplified by this imperfection is somewhat higher here than here because of the left uh, wind load so this is the dominant column so that will be the column where I will calculate the necessary amplitude so I click right click on that column apply this eigenshape as imperfection uh, this is a global type sway imperfection this will be overall so valid for all the combinations complete sign of amplitude will be automatic and I use this chapter to calculate automatically the necessary amplitude this is 55 millimeters so this will include all the global and local type in plane imperfections and second order effect so if I apply this imperfection uh, then I covered the in-plane global and local backlink mode and all the necessary second-order effects. Okay, and then I reevaluate with this global imperfection group and for all the combinations. I can check the second order effects now in the six combination where I uh, defined this imperfection here the imperfection combination this is the deformation this is the second order displacement calculated by the secation so from from the uh, defined 55 millimeters I get for second order displacement this 15 since the associated alpha critical value is about 4 so but still it is a quite considerable value this is the direction and these are for that imperfection these are the bending moments the additional bending moments so it can be checked directly what are the additional bending moments here in the load second order calculation for that load combination and imperfection combination and of course if I see the complete deformation these are the uh, complete second order deformation including the in-plane and in-plane loads all the loads and the imperfections and the bending moment as well here these are the uh, second order bending moment and if I have covered all the in-plane effects then I can use again using the second order elastic analysis and run the out of plane backlink check using the general method based on the sensitivity based uh, uh, calculation of the uh, slendernesses and then checking I can say that we can see that we have an increasement in especially here at that column we have the largest increase in the bending moment and now this point is the governing here also we have some increasement increase of, of the uh, uh, values and uh, this is the first and maybe most uh, most a recommended way for design where the imperfection uh, the imperfections are used to cover the global or in-plane backlink modes which are outside of the uh, uh, general method so the general method is allowed in the recent standard only for the out of plane backlink modes so in that way the in-plane effect in all the combinations are covered by the uh, properly amplified and pro with proper ampl uh, amplitude uh, this uh, in-plane backlink mode 
So it is covered, the in-plane effect, and the out-of-plane backlink is calculated by the general method and the, the augmented, the increased second-order bending moments are, are used and in the situation all the backlink effects are covered in the right way but in a mixed version, so in-plane covered by uh, imperfection and out-of-plane covered by uh, reduction factor by the general method. So this is, this is one way and also uh, we can check in other combinations as well uh, what are the deformations or what are the uh, internal uh, bending moment, additional second order bending moment from the imperfection. We can see that in this sixth combination it is 13. The direction is the same, it is 8 in the first combination. Uh, it is very low in the second combination, it is only 3. It is just because if we see the second combination uh, we haven't reached the uh, the uh, in-plane backlink mode, so the in-plane backlink mode is above uh, uh, 10, the alpha critical value is ab above 10 in the second load combination, so that's why the second order bending uh, effect in that combination is very uh, low and we can check in the other combinations as well. So we can say that we can see that with the right value and with the right direction uh, in all the combinations, it is opposite direction in the uh, last combination, so in the right with, with the uh, accurate amplitude and accurate direction the uh, second order effect due to an overall imperfection is taken into account automatically. Okay, and the last task what I would like to show is uh, how can I use the other imperfection forms in in one combination like in, in the in the sixth combination to cover uh, out of plane maybe out of plane local uh, backlink modes as well uh, in that combination. So these are the relevant backlink modes in that combination while I showed you uh, earlier. So let me do it step by step. First we can see that the most dominant one is a flexural backlink of that uh, column. So I take this combination as column 1. Uh, this type of imperfection will be a local one, so valid only for that combination. Maybe this, this type of imperfection can happen in other combinations as well, but usually the, the, the localized backlink modes are advised to use only the uh, proper combination where the backlink mode is calculated. So this is not a global type backlink mode anyway, this is a local backlink mode, so will be applied only in that, that combination and uh, the amplitude can be automatically evaluated because this is a compressed column and it is 22 millimeters so I take this into the global group. I take take it to the second column as well. So let's say it is column 2. I calculate the amplitude in weak axis direction. The value is almost the same and it is also a local one. The third Buckley mode is the in-plane, I already take it as an overall imperfection. Maybe I take this one as well. That is what I mentioned, that how to define the amplitude, it is not, not so straightforward. What we can usually uh, recommend is that see the uh, 
displacement of the most compressed flange. In that case, this this region is, is the most complex, so we have a high bending moment here. So the lower flange is under compression, that's why it is going out, because the upper flange is, uh, is supported. And if we see it from upside, from the top view, we can see that maybe this can be regarded as the equivalent length, because for that table, what we have here, for the table we need a length and this length is uh, only definite if we have a simply supported uh, single span uh, column or beam. If we have other type of support system like here in this uh, 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 beam then we have to somehow define an equivalent length for which these numbers and these amplitude can be calculated. So now we can see that uh, uh, maybe some measure of, of that uh, can be a good estimate uh, for the, for the uh, length. Here the span is, is 20 meters, so the half span is, is uh, 10 meters and it's starting somewhere here, so maybe 5 meters is uh, enough to take into account. Even we can see some kind of, if it, it was, it, if it would be fixed at that point, but anyway, for the sake of, of reliability, we take uh, 5 meters for equivalent length. So, uh, a local one, this is a beam, and for the value, the equivalent member length, let's say it is 5 meters, uh, this is an IP cross-section, so we can have for plastic check, uh, it is a B, so L over 200 we can use, and we get 25 uh, millimeters uh, from that. Uh, for lateral torsional buckling, the Euro code recommends us to use a half value, considering that uh, this value is taken to the uh, reference, uh, reference line of the member, like here, in the reference line, and the compression flange is moving some uh, additional uh, extent uh, out of plane, so that's why it is usually enough to take a half of the calculated value. So that's why this uh, 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 12 millimeter value can be enough. And with some similar calculations, maybe we can calculate here the amplitude for that uh, member. It is a little bit more uh, appropriate because we can see that uh, this is between these uh, restraining points and between these two points we have uh, about, well, let me see, okay, I take this point here, so it's Oh, sorry. So it's about it's about two meters, two and a half meters, two and a half. We can select again this one, 
and with this uh, measure uh, it is 6.25 uh, millimeters and this is the beam beam 2 with a local uh, uh, type of imperfection okay so now I selected lots of imperfection for this uh, load combination these are collected here so we have a sway imperfection uh, with this uh, amplitude this is an overall type imperfection all the others are local for the six combination two for the two columns and two for the two beams and uh, going to the analysis applying this group of imperfections calculating all the imperfection load cases and of course for all the combination the second order analysis including the effect of this group of imperfections we run the analysis and uh, we can check the effects okay so what we got for second order analysis uh, of course we have here all the imperfection cases which uh, we can uh, we can uh, analyze separately what is the effect what is the magnitude etc and at the load combinations we can check for each combination the imperfection combination which means all the combination load cases combination case uh, uh, imperfection cases which were applied to this combination for example for the combination 6 we have applied all the shown uh, imperfection modes and uh, with automatic direction and amplitude and we can see here that we have basically a swaying imperfection mode but on the columns we can clearly see the out of plane out of plane buckling imperfection mode as well and on this beam part and column part we can see the out of plane lateral torsional buckling type imperfection and here we can see the other lateral torsional buckling type imperfection mode shape so these are all the imperfection cases applied to this combination and the deformation and we can see the internal forces of course we will have the bending moments in in-plane bending moments from the in-plane imperfections we have the out-of-plane bending moments here in the columns and in the relevant parts of the beams from the out-of-plane imperfections and from the out-of-plane part we have some uh, B moment warping moment as well so in this combination we covered all buckling effects by direct calculation of imperfections associated imperfection modes and that means that for this combination based on this second order uh, analysis for the combination 6 we can run only the cross-section check which will include all of these effects at the uh, sectional level strength level the utilization is somewhat higher as I uh, mentioned usually the uh, proposed imperfection amplitudes uh, are conservative so gives higher 
utilization than the uh, uh, reduction factors or, or the buckling curves and if we check for example this cross section we can see that we have a lot of internal uh, moments in plane out of plane moments B moment as well and based on the uh, stresses in the section uh, this is the final utilization of this hunched cross-section we can check here all the different stresses from uh, the different uh, uh, second-order moments forces and moments okay so this was an example this combination was an example for how to use in-plane overall imperfections together with out-of-plane local type imperfections uh, to cover all possible buckling modes of a structural system by directly calculating their second-order effect and checking only the cross-section strength. So. Uh, Thank you for your attention. I hope it was a useful webinar. I think imperfection method is a very powerful uh, method and sometimes very, very illustrative because it shows directly the second order effects acting along the members, the second order deformations and internal forces and uh, we can get a lot of information regarding how to uh, brace the structure, how to strengthen the structure if we want uh, to avoid some uh, failure modes. So thank you for your participation and goodbye.